59. Determine the standard enthalpy change, the entropy change, and the free energy change for the conversion of diamond to graphite. Then discuss the spontaneity of the conversion with respect to the enthalpy and the entropy changes, and then explain why diamond spontaneously changing into graphite is not observed. Okay, so the first thing is we just have to find out the enthalpy value, the entropy, right, the ent enthalpy uh, change and the free energy change. So I guess we'll start with the enthalpy. Now, enthalpy, it has an H in there, so that's how I remember it as the heat amount for a certain reaction. And now for the heat, this is always linked to a delta H. So H for heat, and H has the, you know, letter H is in the word enthalpy. But how do we find the enthalpy change? Well, we're going to assume that this is at standard conditions, so I can go in the back of the textbook to find out the numbers that are given for diamond, which is just carbon, and going into graphite, which is also just carbon. Carbon. Now, I wrote the equation this way because we are converting diamond to graphite, so I have to have diamond as my reactant and graphite. Now, just to put this into perspective, the engagement ring, that is a diamond, is just tons and tons and tons and tons of just one element. It's carbon. Pretty cool. Graphite, on the other hand, is tons and tons and tons and tons and tons of carbon. This is your pencil, right? So whenever you write on a pencil, which who writes, you know, with a pencil nowadays, but the lead that comes out of the pencil is graphite. So we're saying that diamond can, you know, turn into graphite. So a diamond, a girl's best friend, can turn into a pencil. Pretty cool. But anyway, let's keep going. So I went to the back of the textbook to find out what the delta H's were for diamond and graphite, and we just have to use those to find the standard enthalpy change. We're going to use this formula, right? And we've seen this time and time again, right? Delta H for the whole entire reaction, Rxn, is the sum, that's what this is, right? The sum is just, you know, adding up all your products minus the sum of all of your reactants. But because this formula, there's only one carbon, that's a diamond, and one carbon, that's a graphite, for this, the numbers are going to be the same because you would multiply by just one. But multiplying by one for anything is just the same thing, right? So I could just use those numbers. So let's find out what that enthal the entropy, actually the enthalpy would be. So we have zero, that's the product, minus the reactant, which is 1.89. So we have a delta H value of a negative 1.89. Units for this would just be kilojoules because the one that you multiplied was how many moles you had. And the moles cancel out on the units, so you're just left with um, kilojoules. So by this being a negative value, that means that this reaction is exothermic. So when this reaction occurs, when diamond converts over into graphite, you're going to be losing heat. Heat is going to be given off to the environment and it gets, starts getting hot. So that means that the heat would just be on your product side if we had to put a placement. So anytime that you see an exothermic reaction, the heat is always on the product side. Now let's use the same formula to just find the entropy change. Entropy is delta S. And this always talks about randomness or chaos of the system. Are we going towards a more structured system or a less structured? Let's find it out. We could use the same formula, but instead of all those H's, I'm just gonna get rid of these and I'm just gonna put S's for them. So we could use the same formula. The delta S for the whole entire reaction is the sum of the S products minus the sum of the S reactants. Times them by one, just to show you that we're multiplying by those moles that are in the coefficients. And now 
Delta S for the whole entire reaction would be 5.740 minus 2.38. 2.38. Let's just use Calci for this. So let's see, more ordered or less ordered? It's going to be a positive value. 5.74 minus 2.38. And we get 3.36. And that's units of joule per Kelvin, because the moles will cancel out. So now you have a delta S value of 3.36. That's a positive value. Anytime that you have a positive value, that means that you're becoming more disordered. That's favorable. The world is going towards more chaos, more disorder. We're constantly expanding. The universe is expanding. So it's becoming more disordered. So that's favorable. So I'm just going to actually write that down. So anytime that you have a delta S that's positive, that's favorable. Now, going back to the delta H idea, is exothermic reactions favorable? Well, in terms of... Um, you know, emotions, right? It's, it's better off to, you know, not bottle anything up, right? If, if something's wrong, you should always address the situation. You should let it out, right? That's basically the same thing as an exothermic reaction. You're losing heat. You're letting it out. So in terms of chemistry as well, that's also favorable. So now we can do the second thing. Remember when it says discuss the spontaneity with respect to the enthalpy and the entropy changes. So we're going to make a hypothesis. Since our delta H and since our delta S are favorable conditions, we know that there is no possible way that we can get an unfavorable outcome for our Gibbs free energy. So if both H and S are in favorable conditions, that also means that delta G has to be favorable. But now the question is, what is delta G when it's favorable? Is delta G going to be positive or is it going to be negative? Delta G being a negative value is favorable. Whenever a delta G is negative, that means it's spontaneous. And if you are a spontaneous reaction, that means that you don't have to include any extra outside energy to make this reaction goes. If you have a spontaneous reaction, that means that this is just going to happen. But wait a minute. That means that a girl's best friend is going to decompose into graphite? That's a spontaneous rea reaction? Oh, boy. But let's just see the number. We can use the same formula which is this one, and maybe I'll bring this over here. Same formula, and I'm just going to use, maybe I'll put this over here. Get rid of the H's. We're now putting in G's. I did go to the back of the textbook to find out what those uh, free energy numbers are, and then we're just going to plug it in. So delta G gives free energy for the whole entire reaction is... 5.740, actually, nope, just kidding. Did anybody catch that? We have to use the delta G values, right? Times by one, times by one. And now it would be zero. Zero minus 2.90. And there is your negative value. Delta G is a negative 2.90. Units would be kilojoules. And since it's negative, that means that it's spontaneous. Oh boy. So technically, this reaction is going to go. The diamond is going to turn into graphite. But for the last part of the question, it says, explain why diamond spontaneously changing. So... It, they did kind of give us a clue that delta G was going to be a negative. But we just have to explain why diamond spontaneously changes, you know, changing into graphite is not observed. J 
Generally speaking, if you do have a negative value for a delta G, the reaction is going to occur. But, like the slogan says, right? What is the slogan? <laughs> um, not diamonds are a girl's best friend, but the other one. Uh, diamonds are forever, right? So, diamonds are forever. They're forever in our lifetime. Because even though this is changing, we are going to be dead before we see it. Since this is a spontaneous reaction, it has to happen, but it is very slow. The half-life of diamond is a crazy number that basically, in order to see this change, you would have to live for like centuries. And since that doesn't happen with humans, we're never going to be able to see this conversion. So that kind of tells us why we never see the the changing, because it's changing at a very, 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 very slow rate. So we can assume for us that diamonds are forever, because we would never see the change. So to us, they're forever. I hope that makes sense. Thank you so much for uh, viewing the video. Um, yeah. Subscribe to the channel if you want to help us out. We're almost at 25,000 subscribers, and it's all because of you guys. We love helping you out, and let's just keep learning. All right? I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.